Hello. Here is a brief and necessarily somewhat arbitrary overview of animal biosciences. The animal biosciences program divides into two broad categories. One we might call genetics, genomics and breeding, which is aimed at understanding adaptation. What is adaptation and how can we understand adaptation in order to improve the fit between livestock and production systems? in order to close that productivity gap. And on the back of that, we have research aimed at improving delivery. There's not much point in developing an improved set of genetics if you don't know how you can deliver it to the farmers. And that's aligned with the livestock and fish CRP. And a second category of activities within animal bioscience is, is, is human and animal health. One very strong program is, is epidemiology, and particularly epidemiology of, of zoonotic infections. And that's led by Eric Favre, and aims to improve human and human health. Uh, and this is aligned with the A4NH CRP. And we have a program within uh, animal biosciences looking at animal health. And that considers diagnostics, response to vaccination, particularly uh, the infection treatment method for uh, ECF, host pathogen interactions, and pathogen pathogen interactions. And all of those are aimed at improving productivity, and they're aligned with the livestock and fish CRP. Success is going to look like improved livestock productivity and improved human health. Of course, that clear distinction between those two areas of research is not real. Um, there's strong overlap in both in terms of, of the research, samples, uh, and, and technology. So what are our strengths and our weaknesses? We have very strong bilateral funding. Uh, we have a number of major Gates, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates um, program funds. Uh, Eric Fevre, as I've mentioned, you can hear some more from him later, um, has a series of very strong high-end bilateral um, projects funding some of his work. We have some very strong strategic partnerships. Examples would be University of Edinburgh, Rosden Institute, University of Liverpool, and a number of others. We have a good, strong relationship with Becca. Becca supporters in some of our high-end science, and that's likely to get much stronger, particularly as the high throughput genotyping platform comes on the stream later this year. And we're aiming to build, and successfully, I think, building uh, a long-term, large-scale, integrated portfolio. The principle of fewer projects and larger projects all slotting into an integrated program does seem to be coming good at last. Uh, and we are able to support, and we are supported by some critical infrastructure. A couple of examples of this would be uh, the biorepository and the informatics platforms. Those are areas where we put significant effort uh, into, into building very strong, robust systems, and in turn, uh, they are supporting our science. And in, indeed, some of the major program funding that we've received recently um, could not have been obtained if we had not had the support from those platforms. We have a nice mix of a relatively routine uh, activities and some pretty high risk off the wall activities. So to take the example of the advanced phenotyping tools, we're trying to, we, one of the challenges we face is, is efficiently and effectively phenotyping animals in the field. And we're looking at some pretty cool electronics to do that, as well as a slightly lower risk approach using existing mobile phones. And in the area of reproductive technology, we've got some pretty predictable uh, research, such as in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer, all the way up to some rather high end and risky activities associated with genetic modification. And of course, we have a great team with highly complementary skills and interest. So what are our problems? Where are our weaknesses? We have a, a more limited donor portfolio than I would like. We're rather heavily reliant on one or two donors. Occasionally, we see tension with the donor agenda. Um, and the debates that we have with the donor to align what we think needs to be doing with what they want to fund can sometimes be quite entertaining. Some of those donors bring with them massive transaction costs. We ha have, like everybody else, a problem of meeting full cost recovery and, and high operating costs. We have the challenge of funding 
some of the really high risk, high reward, off the wall projects. And those are sometimes run as weekend projects or skunk works. And we're dealing necessarily with long timescales, particularly the genetics and genomics areas. Inevitably, delivery of those is slow and donors sometimes struggle to grasp that. So what are our prospects for collaboration? There are several linkages that we regard as critically important and we are struggling to fund. Uh, I could list these as targeting, modeling, high-end computer science, electronics, and I'm sure there are others. These are areas where we would really like to, to do some research. We'd like funding to plug gaps and, and, to, and to build a more coherent uh, set of programs running from high-end, high-risk to, to downstream, low-risk activities. Uh, and donors are not especially interested in funding these, and we're struggling currently to find support for these. So although we flag them as very important, uh, then they are, they are not prominent in our, in our portfolio at the moment, and we would certainly like to raise the, the profile of these areas. So that's Animal Biosciences. Uh, you'll find presentations from, from two scientists within the program. Um, and of course, there's a lot more that goes on that we don't really have time to discuss here. And perhaps that will come out in the online discussion. Thank you very much.